So you're probably aware of the global obesity epidemic. Britain is too fat and is getting fatter and doing nothing is not an option. America is struggling with an obesity epidemic. Americans are not winning their battle against obesity. And this map shows just how big a problem it's become. So what can we do about it? Well, we have this idea that if you want to lose weight, then you just need to exercise more. But alongside the endless articles covering the best exercises for weight loss and the TikToks of shirtless gym influencers screaming that they have all the answers. This is the best exercise to get rid of your stubborn belly fat. We all are wrong, everybody. Unfortunately, it seems that exercise is pretty much useless when trying to lose weight. So why is that? We are fighting evolution and we are fighting biology. That's Lee Humphreys, a consultant bariatric surgeon and obesity expert. I spoke of him to better understand why our body sabotages us when we try to lose weight. But first, it's important to understand why we put fat on in the first place. And it all starts with calories. Yeah, so calories are basically a unit of energy. And that's all it is on a very simplistic level. It's how much energy do you get out of eating food? The body needs energy for literally everything it does. And this energy comes from the nutrients in our diet. All our cells require energy to perform their various functions to keep you alive. Your brain requires energy to think, your heart requires energy to pump blood, and your respiratory muscles require energy so that you can breathe. Around 70% of our daily calorie requirements is made up for feeding those processes that we've just talked about. And that's something called a basal metabolic rate. And you and I have no control over that. Then around 15 to 20% of the calories we burn makes up energy for physical activity. So this can be either dedicated exercise like rowing or the activity we do on a daily basis. For example, typing on a keyboard, the household chores, or even fidgeting. This is known as non-exercise activity thermogenesis. The remaining calories we burn refers to the energy required to break down the food we eat into its nutrients. Altogether, this makes up our total energy expenditure, or otherwise known as our total calories out. And so already you can start to see that even by massively increasing the amount of exercise you do, you're only influencing a relatively small amount of the calories that you burn every day. To put this all into perspective, walking at five kilometers per hour for half an hour will burn around 150 calories, and running at 10 kilometers per hour for half an hour will burn around 300 calories. So at this pace, it will take either a four hour walk or a two hour run to burn off the same amount of calories in a McDonald's Big Mac meal. So it's very easy to overeat and consume more calories than our body actually uses. So what happens from a physiological point of view in our body when our calories in is greater than our calories out? Well, that's why we have fat. So fat is basically an energy storage device. That's all it is. So when we eat more than we need, we start to accumulate fat in our fat cells. We each store fat in different places around our body, and genetics plays a huge role in where specifically we store that fat. But fundamentally, fat is incredible at storing energy that we can use for later. Each gram of fat provides around nine calories of energy, which is more than twice the energy provided by carbs or proteins. We're all born with a certain number of fat cells. We don't actually make very many new fat cells as we grow older. And you can think of an individual fat cell a little bit like a balloon. So as you start to store energy in your fat cells, you don't get more fat cells. What you get are fat cells that get bigger and they grow. So from an evolutionary point of view, our body has a tendency to put on fat relatively easily. This is because thousands of years ago, our ancestors lived in environments where food was both scarce and unpredictable. So often they wouldn't know when or where their next meal was coming from. And so we've had to evolve mechanisms that allow us to store energy relatively easily and hang on to that as best we can. So fat acts as a reserve which helped our ancestors get through periods of famine. But in today's world, there's an abundance of ultra processed food and overconsumption of this high calorie food is fueling the modern day obesity epidemic. So how does our body stop us from losing fat when we exercise? Well, to answer this, we have to travel halfway across the world, right here to Tanzania, a country in East Africa. Here lies the home of the Hadza tribe. They're one of the last remaining hunter gatherer communities in the world and they give us a glimpse into how humans used to live thousands of years ago. The Hadza tribe are incredibly active and rely on hunting wild animals, foraging berries, collecting honey, and walking many kilometers to collect water. 
A few years ago, scientists began comparing populations in industrialized societies with the Hadza hunter-gatherer community. Interestingly, the Hadza community moved more in a single day than the average office worker in a week. So surely they're burning far more calories, right? Well, the study found that the Hadza burn the same amount of calories per day as a typical person in an industrialized country. So despite the Hadza being far more physically active, their total daily energy expenditure was almost identical to the Western populations. Okay, so why is that? Because surely if they're doing more exercise, they're walking more, running more, surely they will just carry on burning more calories. So it's about compensation. So it may be that their basal metabolic rate slows down. It's a common misconception that the total calories you burn increases linearly the more exercise you do. But actually, this study looked at over 300 people and found that the total energy you expend begins to plateau at higher levels of physical activity. The body actually becomes more efficient at managing those basal metabolic processes we talked about earlier. Brain function, digestion, immune responses. So in short, the body compensates by cutting energy usage in these areas, which is why being more active doesn't always result in burning significantly more calories. We come back to evolution. Our brains perceive weight loss as a threat to survival. So once you start exercising and you are starting to lose weight, unbeknownst to us, our brain starts to induce mechanisms that not only reduce the amount of weight that we're starting to lose, but also starts to drive us to eat more. And I've noticed this myself. After a long workout at the gym, I find I'm so much hungrier and will eat so much more. The one systematic review I did find concluded from the good quality studies that exercise does lead to a small increase in hunger and energy intake. Some people who go to the gym and they'll do a workout and they'll think, oh, brilliant. I've gone to the gym, I'll reward myself. And what will they re often reward themselves with? Usually some sort of high calorie snack. And we've definitely all been there. After a workout, you'll be so much more inclined to treat yourself and reach for that tub of ice cream after dinner without feeling guilty. You may have also noticed if you work out in the morning, you are also subconsciously more inclined to move around less during the day. It might be that you decide to take the lift at work instead of the stairs. So do you think our body is sabotaging us when we're exercising, trying to lose weight? Yes, but not because it's deliberately sabotaging us, because our brain still thinks it's 200,000 years ago and we don't know where our next meal's coming from. At this point, I now want to emphasize that we are not saying that exercise is bad. You know, the message that I give to patients is exercise is the single biggest thing or single best thing we can do for our overall general and physical health. And exercise is absolutely to be encouraged. 100% exercise is a good thing. In my last video, I already went through the overwhelming amount of evidence there is for how increasing your cardiorespiratory fitness through exercise significantly increases your chances of living longer. So I really wanna emphasize that we are not saying don't do exercise, but the message of this video is simple. Exercise alone, will not give you sustained long-term weight loss. One review looked at 65 studies with a cumulative total of over 3,000 participants. It found that calorie restriction alone led to the highest fat loss, followed by calorie restriction paired with exercise. And the group that lost the least fat were individuals that exercised alone. And so let's shift the narrative and maybe talk about the optimal strategies for incorporating exercise into a weight loss regime. You've got to try and find a form of exercise that people are happy doing. Uh, and that varies for all of us. Uh, you know, some people love going to the gym, other people despise going to the gym. Find something you enjoy that gets you moving. It might be signing up to a gym. There is evidence that shows resistance training can increase your basal metabolic rate, but this is only because as you build muscle, there is more of you. Bigger muscle fibers means more cells, which in turn need more energy. So nonetheless, exercise could also mean playing a sport like football or swimming. You don't need to overcomplicate it. Some people love cardio, but it could also just mean going for regular walks with friends. And just as a final message, how do you think we should rethink our association with exercise and weight loss then? Exercise is a fantastic thing for overall general health and we should all be doing more of it and we should be encouraged to do it. But exercise alone will not help you lose weight and keep it off in the long term. So fundamentally, if you want to lose weight, it comes down to eating less. I'll be making a future video on this, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. All the references that went into making this video will be in the video description below. 
You can check out another one of my videos on the exemplification of weight loss and why exempic and other semi-glutide variants are not miracle weight loss drugs. Until next time and see you soon.